Most everyone has heard of the Wright brothers, but far fewer recognize the name Thomas Ethelin Selfridge. Selfridge graduated from West Point in 1903, the same year as the Wright brothers' first flight at Kitty Hawk. Soon after, Selfridge himself developed an interest in the burgeoning world of human flight. He was a member of the Aerial Experiment Association, chaired by Alexander Graham Bell, and designed the association's first powered aircraft, the Red Wing. He piloted two of the association's aircraft, White Wing and June Bug. In doing so, he became the first U.S. soldier to pilot a powered aircraft. The U.S. Army trained Selfridge as a dirigible pilot. When the Army agreed to purchase a Wright Flyer for testing, Selfridge was appointed to observe and participate in the acceptance flights. On a September morning in 1908 at Fort Myers, Virginia, Selfridge won the dubious distinction of becoming the first to die in a powered aircraft. Selfridge was flying as a passenger, with Orville Wright as the pilot, during a demonstration flight around the fort. All was going well until a propeller split, triggering a chain of events that ended in tragedy. The propeller severed a guy wire supporting a vertical rudder, which fell out of place as the propeller further shattered. As Orville shut down the engine and struggled for control, the craft nosedived about 75 feet into the ground. Orville was badly injured, but would recover and fly again. Selfridge fractured his skull and perished a few hours later. It is amazing really that the first fatality occurred five years following the beginning of powered flight, not because of the volume of flight time accumulated, but due to the primitive state of aircraft control. There had certainly been some bumps, a high percentage of test flights ended in crashes, yet the loss of Selfridge, before a crowd of spectators took many off guard. In spite of this tragedy, the potential of airplanes was clear and engaging, aviation development would of course continue. The Wright brothers determined that stress fractures caused the propeller failure, and redesigned the Wright flyer. The Army mandated the use of headgear resembling football helmets for its aviators. I would like to report that each mishap resulted in design changes that precluded repeat accidents. The reality is that lessons often had to be repeated several times before risks were effectively designed out of successive aircraft. Many young airmen were killed in the Wright Flyer and other early aircraft before basic, fatal design flaws were recognized and abandoned. So what cements Selfridge's place in history? It is not that he died more heroically than those who followed. His death awakened the sensibilities of a public, giddy with the newness of flight, that this was a dangerous business. There were forces to be respected, and operator safety must be added to design wherever possible. Accidents are harsh teachers, but we must act upon their hard-won lessons. Arguably, we progress much more upon our failures than our successes. James Russell Lowell's words are appropriate, mishaps are like knives that either serve us or cut us as we grasp them by the blade or the handle.